Just a full step by step with touching tutorial explaining how I edited this image using Photoshop 2024. I'm going to bring down how I changed the background and also how I added that blur effect. And to follow along, I'll be leaving the link where you can get this little file in the description below of this video. Now, the first thing I'm going to do once I bring my image inside of Photoshop, I'm going to duplicate my background layer by pressing on Command J or Control J if I use the Windows. Now, I'm just going to use focus separation to remove the blemishes. So I'll come to my action, and by the way, if you need my action, I'll be leaving a link where you can get it in the description below of this video. Now, I'm going to click on Focus Separation 16 bit right here because this image is 16 bit. And if your image is 8 bit, use Focus Separation 8 bit right here. And to know if your image is 16 bit or 8 bit, just come to your image right here, click on Mode, and you're going to see if your image is 8 bit or 16 bit. Right? Now, since my image is 16 bit, I'm going to come to Focus Separation and just click on 16 bit right here. Now for the Gaussian blur radius, if you want your image to be smooth, use a low blur radius. If you want to retain texture on your image, use a high blur radius. Now for this image right here, I'm going to use a blur radius of 6.4 and just click on OK. I do a focus separation, we separate the textures and the colors. Now since we want to remove the blemishes from our image, we are going to be working on the texture, which is this high frequency copy right here. Now once you select this high frequency copy right here, just pick on your close stamp to right here. Once you pick your close stamp to, make sure your opacity is set to 100, your flow is set to 100, and your sample is on current layer, all right? So just zoom in. Once you zoom in, make sure your blur size fits the kind of blemishes you want to remove. So to increase or decrease your blur size, make sure you're using the square bracket key to increase and decrease your blur size. And just press option to sample from the close by area or alternate to sample and just paint over any blemishes you want to remove. So option or alternate to sample and just paint over any blemishes you want to remove just like that. Option or alternate to sample and just paint over any blemishes you want to remove just like that. All right. So just do this for the whole of your image and just remove any blemishes from your image just like so. All right. Let's hope you see the before and after. All right. So see the before and the after. The before. In the after so if you are doing it make sure you actually take your time to do it now next time we to do i'm just going to be using the mixer brush tool to smoothen out the skin so i'll come to my brush here layer once i come to my brush here layer i'll pick my mixer brush tool once i pick my mixer brush tool i'll make sure i'm using a soft hand brush okay once i select the soft hand brush my weight is on 30 my load is on 30. now this means doesn't really matter my flow is on 20 and sample layer selected because i'm working on this brush layer which is an empty layer. Now after that, I'm not going to turn off my high texture layer. I'm going to click on this icon right here to turn it off. So once I turn it off, you can see the image is kind of blurry because we now have only the colors on the image. So I'm going to zoom in and just paint on the highlights separately. So also make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size according to the parts of the image you are actually working on. So make sure you are brushing your highlights separately, your shadow separately, as you can see. And also your meters separately and just use a big brush to brush on the transition between the highlight and the shadow just to even out everything like that All right so i'm just going to reduce my brush size to brush on this small highlight right there all right just like this now i'm going to do the same thing for the body i'm just going to paint on this part like this just like that All right so make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size according to the parts of the image you are actually working on. It's very, 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 very important. Okay. All right. Let's see the before and after. So this is before focus separation, after focus separation, before focus separation, and after focus separation. So next time I'm going to do, I'm just going to do my micro the jump on. I'm not going to be doing this manually. I have a plugin for that. So if I'm going to create a stamp visible by pressing no command option shift E, or Ctrl Shift Alternate E to create a stamp visible layer. Then I'm just going to my filter, come to retouch on me, and just click on the jambon right here. And the retouch on me will automatically do my micro the jambon for me instead of doing it manually. And if you need the retouch on me, I'll be leaving the link where you can get it in the description below of this video. And if you use that link right now, you're going to get 30% off any purchase you make. And I only recommend you get a retouch on me plugin if you're actually making money of photography and retouching because it's quite expensive. I'm always going to tell you that it's really expensive. So only get it if it's something you need, all right? So if I just zoom in, you are going to see the before 
and the after. So just take a look at the image. So see the before and the after. The before and the after. And from here, I'm just going to click on apply. I'm just going to apply that effect to me. The next thing I'm going to do is the global dodge and burn. Now to do that, I'll come to my action again and just click on Sinless Dodge and Burn right here. So for the global dodge and burn, what I want to do, I want to add dimensions to the image. So I'm going to be dodging the highlights and burning the shadows, right? Now, once I play the action, I'm going to open it up, come to the burn, pick my normal brush tool, just bring my flow to 2% and just zoom in. But once I zoom in, I'm just going to hide all the layer below so that I can see the original image so I can know where to dodge and where to burn. So you can see right here on the jaw, I'm just going to burn it with a white brush. I'm just going to burn this particular place right here. All right. I'm going to burn this particular place. I'm going to burn this nose. I'm going to burn this part right here. I'm going to burn this part right here. I'm going to burn this part just like that. Now I'm going to come to the dodge. I'm going to dodge this highlight right here. I'm going to dodge this highlight right here. I'm going to dodge this highlight right here. Also, I'm going to dodge the highlight right here on the jaw. Dodge this highlight right here. Dodge this place and dodge the forehead like that. So once I'm done, I'm going to turn on all the layers which I turn off to bring back a retouching. Now let's see the before and after of our global dodge and burn. Now, say the before and the after. The before and the after. Looking a lot better. Now if you feel it's too much, you can just reduce the opacity just like that. Alright, so let me just go over everything I did so you can see where we started from and where we are right now before we continue. So, this is where we started from originally and this is where we are right now, before and the after. The next thing I'm going to do, if I just zoom in on this image, you can see the image lacks texture. So I'm going to be adding digital texture manually to the image. And by the way, if you need these textures, I'm going to be leaving the link where I get it in the description below of this video as well. Now to add that digital textures, I'm going to come to my adjustment right here and just click on patterns right here. Once I click on pattern, I'm going to click on this drop that icon. Once I click on that drop that icon, you are going to see this. 8 full screen texture. So after you download it and install it, you are going to see this 8 full screen texture. And if you don't know how to download or get these textures, I'll be leaving the link to a video where you can watch in the description below of this video. Now, once I open that 8 textures, I'm going to click on this fourth one right here and just change the angle to this part, to this place right here because that's where the light is coming from and just click on OK. Now, from here, I'm going to change the blend from normal to soft light. Once I change it to soft light, if I zoom in, you can see the textures are all over the place. So to adjust that, I'm going to rasterize this layer. So I'm going to right click on this place and just click on rasterize layer. Once I rasterize that pattern layer, let me just rename it to texture. I'm going to come to my filter. I'm going to come to my liquify. And once I come to liquify, I'm just going to scroll the way down and just click on show background right here. Once I click on show background, what I want to do inside of liquify, I'll pick my forward warp tool and just increase my burst size. And just try to liquefy the textures to fit where I want to put it so that it's not just going to look flat. It's going to add a little bit of dimensions to the textures. So I'm just going to move the texture with the liquefy just like this. All right. Just to add a bit of dimension and shape to the texture instead of it to just look flat. So let this work for me. You don't have to be precise. I'm just going to click on OK. All right. So if I just zoom in, you can see it's looking so much better. Now, I don't want to apply this texture to the whole image. If I if I look at the background right now, the texture is affecting the background. I just want to apply it to the skin. So to do that, I'm going to come to this layer mask right here. With the layer mask selected on the texture, I'm not going to press a command I or Ctrl I to invert that layer mask to hide the texture. So right now, you can see the texture no longer there. Now to reveal that texture effect to the place I want it, I'm going to pick my brush tool, take my flow to about 100%, make sure my foreground color is set to white, and just paint that textures on where I want it right here. So I'm only going to paint that texture only on the skin. I'm not going to be painting on the lips. And also, I'm not going to be painting on the eyes. I'm also not going to be painting on the hair. I'm just going to paint on only where I want it. All right. Let's see the before and the after. So take a look at the image. So this is the before and the after. The before and the after. So what I'm going to do with the layer mask selected, I'm going to come to Windows, click on Properties, and just feather it just like that, just to add a bit of blur to the texture, like so. All right, so see the before and the after. Now 
what I want to do, I'm going to remove the texture from these particular places right there. I just want to apply a little bit of textures to this place right here because right now it's looking fake and unrealistic. So to do that, I'm going to switch to a black brush. Once I switch to a black brush, once I do that, I'm going to come to my opacity and just change the opacity to 50%. Also, I'll come to the flow and just change the flow to 30% and just paint on this particular place right here just to reduce the amount of texture I have in that place just to make it look even more realistic like so all right so I'll do the same thing for under the neck right here and this place and just make the texture look realistic now after that I'm just going to reduce the opacity of the textures so I'll come to my opacity right here and just reduce it a little bit like so so let's see 55 so 55 works on me so let's see see the before and the after the before and the after looking so much better so this is how you can add digital texture to your image all right so next i'm going to do i'm just going to change the background of this image but if i do that i'm going to crop the image i'm going to create a stamp symbol here by pressing on command option shift e or ctrl shift alternate e just pick my crop tool and just crop the image the way i want it so we just crop this image like this all right and hit okay so like this works for me next i'm going to do i'm just going to remove the background so i'm going to click on this quick selection tool right here and just click on this drop that icon and just click on cloud right here to get some more accurate selection so i'm going to click on select subject and photoshop will automatically select our subject for us all right so you can see photoshop did an amazing job for me what i'm going to do i'm just going to invert the selection i press now command shift i or ctrl shift i to invert the selection and just press up command j or ctrl j to remove the subject from the background so right now you can see if i just turn off all my subject layer you can see we have just the background all right so i'm going to rename this layer subject and rename this layer background now my subject layer selected i'm going to hold command or control and click on the background layer to bring back the selection and this time i'm just going to invert the selection again by pressing on command shift i or control shift i to invert the selection and just add a layer mask to my subject layer instead of deleting it i'm just going to hide it now i'm going to click on my background layer and just bring it down below my subject layer now this i'm going to do i'm just going to add a solid color to the background so i'll come to my adjustment and just click on solid color now i use this color right here this blue color i just reduce it a little bit like this and hit okay like this so this is the color I use now after that i'm just going to try and make the selection more accurate so i want to click on this layer mask right here for the subject i'm going to double click on it and just going to open this select and mask for me so what i'm going to do from there i'm going to pick on the refer edge tool and just select on this eye right here just to make the selection for the eye more accurate like this as you can see also just try just make a selection around the edges of the hair like this just to try and make the selection more accurate all right, so then this works on me. I'm going to click on OK. Now, from what I'm going to do, with the layer mask selected, I'm just going to make the edges look smooth. So, with the layer mask selected, I'm going to come to my properties and just feather it like this. So, once I feather it, you can see the edges are not smooth, but it's a bit too much. So, I'm going to click on the properties again and just take the feather down a little bit like this. So, let this works on me. So you can also take your time to find the edges. So you can pick your normal brush to make sure the foreground color is set to black. And with the layer mask selected, just take your time to just refine your selection to get a more accurate selection, as you can see. So just paint the colors inside just to get a more accurate selection. But like this works for me, we can work with this. Now next time I'm going to add noise to the background. So I'll click on my action right here. Just click on noise right here. And if I zoom in, you can see I've added noise to the background. It's looking more realistic right now so let me just reduce the opacity of the line so you can see see the before and the after the before and the after now to add that blur what i'm going to do i'm going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing on command option shift e so once i do that i'm just going to make a selection of the subject but since i already have a selection of the subject i'm not going to bring back that selection so with this layer selected i'm going to hold command and just click on the layer mask to bring back the selection of my subject now i'm going to press up command j and command j to play this layer twice so right now you can see we have two layers right here which i removed the background from so with this first layer selected i'm just going to convert it for smart filter so i'm going to cut my filter and convert for smart filter 
Now with this first layer selected, which is the one we converted to a smart filter, I'm gonna come to filter again, come to blur gallery, and just click on parts blur like this. Once I click on parts blur, I'm just going to move this angle to the direction which I want the blur to come from. So like this works for me. Now I'm going to uncheck this center blur right here. Once I uncheck that center blur, you can choose to increase the speed like this. Also for this temper, you can choose to move it up like this. All right. Now another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this edit blur shape. Now with this edit blur shape, it can actually change the shape of the blur. So I'm going to click on this dot right here and just move it up like this. All right, so that this works for me. Maybe take it up a little bit like this, just to change the shape of the blur, as you can see. So you can just move it anyhow you want and just change it like that, All right? All right, so that this works for me. I like the shape of the blur like this. I'm gonna leave it like this and just click on OK. I'm just going to apply that blur effect for us. So I don't want it for the whole of the image. So I'm gonna add the layer mask to this layer right here. Pick my normal brush to make sure pastel to 100, flow set to 100, and make sure my brush is on black brush. And I'm just going to remove it from where I don't want it like this, and just leave it on any, and just leave it on where I want it, just like that. All right. And from here, I can choose to reduce the opacity of this layer right here. I'm just going to reduce the amount of the blur, as you can see. But I think I'm going to leave it at 100 percent or just take it down a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do, I want to create that white border around the image. So I want to create a stamp visible layer by pressing on Command Option Shift E or Control Shift Alternate E. So I'll come to my crop tool, just change the crop ratio to 4x5 to fit for Instagram and just expand it just like this. And just expand it like this and make sure your background color is set to white. If it's on black, it's going to be on black. So make sure the background color right here is set to white and just hit okay now you can see right now the border is not on white because of this solid color which we added right here so what we want to do we are just going to create a solid color below this new layer we created so come to your adjustment and click on solid color and this time use a white solid color like this and the border is just going to be white all right now next we're going to do just click on this layer right here which is the subject layer press on ctrl a to select the image. So once you make a selection of the whole image, just come to your edit, come to your stroke, and just use a radius of 200 or a width of 200 and change it to white. And make sure inside is selected and just click on OK and click on OK again. I'm just going to add a white border inside your image like this. Now finally, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add nuance to the image just to bring everything to life. So I come to my action again. I'm just going to click on noise right here. Once I click on noise, it's just going to add noise to the image and just bring everything to life. So let me just group everything I did so you can see where we started from and where we are right now. So basically, this is how I edited this image from start to finish. So this is the before and the after. The before and the after. And if you want to watch more tutorial, check out this playlist right here. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay creative.